Hello again. I'm Dr. E. Barry Gordon, and this is the eighth video in my series on the disease testosterone deficiency. It is the great medical tragedy of our era because we should know better than to let this devastating, deadly disease go untreated for so long. In my last video, I discussed the reasons doctors turn their heads and minds away from testosterone. Today, I'll cover the excuses I've heard because the most common reasons given by doctors for ignoring the hormone and its deficiency are just that, excuses. Often they react as if testosterone was a dirty word or an illegal drug or that there was something sordid about it, rather than it being a basic hormone, fundamentally responsible for our growth, strength, health, vigor, and reproductive activity. As I said in the previous video, you should really expect a negative opinion from most doctors. After all, if they told you that they thought testosterone replacement was a good idea, they'd have to explain why they hadn't already prescribed it. So what do they say? Many doctors will say something very nonspecific like, I don't believe in it. I seldom pursue a conversation after that kind of nonsense, because when I do, doctors become embarrassed and hostile. They can't defend such a ridiculous position. What is it exactly that these doctors don't believe in anyway? That testosterone exists? Basic biology will tell you that testosterone is a hormone common to all mammals. Maybe they don't believe that testosterone deficiency requires treatment. Obviously, there must be conditions of deficiency requiring treatment because for over 50 years, the Federal Drug Administration has considered testosterone replacement to be indicated to treat symptoms of deficiency. There's no reason behind statements of disbelief. They're just lame excuses. Some doctors will voice concerns over testosterone causing heart problems. I'll be devoting a video to the connections between testosterone and heart and vascular diseases because there's an abundance of medical studies showing that testosterone deficiency is related to those problems. Probably the most common professional excuse to avoid dealing with testosterone is the very popular and very well-worn warning that, quote, more long-term studies need to be done, close quote. These missing long-term studies are supposedly needed to make certain there aren't any adverse side effects. Even published clinical studies on testosterone almost always end with that kind of statement. It's the thing to say about testosterone. I have quite a few comments about this long-term studies excuse. First, the facts are that testosterone was discovered about 80 years ago. And since then, up until the time I typed these words, there have been over 70,000 published studies on testosterone. Second, Testosterone has been available by prescription since at least 1953. How many drugs and replacement hormones have had their long-term safety and efficacy established during the past half century? How can it be that a hormone vital to growth, health, and reproduction hasn't been studied enough to use after 55 years on the market? And to the best of my knowledge, there still aren't any long-term studies in progress. The only common sense conclusion to all of this is that the supposedly needed long-term studies have been intentionally avoided or prohibited in order to keep the excuse alive. Third, in regard to side effects, after 80 years and over 70,000 studies, no adverse side effects of replacement doses of testosterone worth mentioning have been found. Furthermore, thousands, even tens of thousands, of athletes and bodybuilders of both sexes have for decades taken testosterone in doses 10 to 20 times higher than is needed for replacement. And the adverse consequences, if real, are so uncommon that they make the news. Fourth, in a sense, every healthy, strong, vigorous, sexual man and woman who has ever lived is a long-term study. They are the living proof 
of the safety and efficacy of having an adequate amount of testosterone in the human body for decades. Fifth, if doctors did become concerned about the reality of the massive health problems related to testosterone deficiency, but were truly worried about the long-term treatment consequences, why don't they start short-term treatment? Short-term treatment, by the way, is often considered to be several years. And the sixth and final comment. There is no such thing as adverse effects to properly replacing any missing hormone. So why should testosterone be any different? Now there must be an uproar out there. Most of you are or should be thinking, what about female hormone replacement? What about estrogen and progesterone causing breast cancer and heart disease and blood clots? I'll stand by my statement, and in my next video, I'll give you my view of those very controversial female hormone replacement issues. I promised in video six that I would give you my opinion as to what you should do if faced with a doctor's refusal to check your testosterone level, or to treat you if you're deficient. It's a distasteful piece of advice to give. But patients' well-being have the highest priority. The reality is that if left undiagnosed and untreated, testosterone deficiency is going to have a major negative effect on your health and your life. So if your doctor is so rigid that he refuses to order a simple blood test at your request, or refuses to treat you according to stated or inferred official FDA guidelines, you'd be better off going to another doctor. Finally, as always, if those of you watching believe that there is any merit to these videos, please show them to your friends and family and forward the links with a comment to everyone on your email list asking them to do the same. It would be difficult to do them a more important favor. I'm Dr. E. Barry Gordon, and again, thank you for watching.